ZWO has just released the specs to their brand new smart telescope, the S30. The S30 is the successor to ZWO's first smart telescope, the ZWO C-Star S50. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the major upgrades from the S50 to the S30, and we're also going to take a look at some of the other details you might want to be aware of before you purchase this telescope. Let's take a look at the specs. As most of us know, the C-Star S50 had an aperture of 50mm and a focal length of 250mm. That left the C-Star S50 with a focal ratio of f5. Now that's not bad, but something a lot of us were hoping for in this newer model telescope was a higher focal length or a shorter focal ratio. What we got instead, however, was a smaller aperture and a shorter focal length. The S30 has an aperture of 30mm and the focal length is only 150mm. Thankfully this leaves us at the same focal ratio of f5, however there is less focal length meaning less magnification. The reason I believe that ZWO made this major change is because the majority of people who were using the C-Star S50 were attempting to use it to image larger deep sky objects such as the Andromeda Galaxy, the Lagoon Nebula, and the Orion Nebula. However, with this higher focal length, those deep sky objects were not able to easily fit into the field of view without using the mosaic mode. This caused a lot of frustration for a lot of the owners of the C-Star S50, therefore it is reasonable for them to lower down the focal length instead of raising it up. Another major upgrade that ZWO has made with this new telescope definitely has to be the sensor. The sensor that ZWO used in the C-Star S50 was the IMX462 sensor. While that sensor is good for low light situations, it is not nearly as good as the sensor they installed in this telescope. The sensor that they use in this telescope is the same sensor used in the Dwarf 3 telescope, and that is the Sony Starvis 2 IMX662 sensor. This particular sensor is great at increasing contrast, saturation, and it has incredible light collecting capabilities, definitely making it a good match for this telescope which is going to take short exposures starting at about 15 seconds. Battery life is looking the same as the C-Star S50, they're predicting about 6 hours of usage when taking deep sky imaging, which is the same as with the C-Star S50. The storage is also going to be the same at 64GB. Take a look at the difference between the field of view of the Andromeda Galaxy with the C-Star S50 and the S30. Despite it being 100mm less focal length, there's really not that much of a difference in the field of view. You can see that there really wasn't much difference if you take a look at this picture of the Andromeda Galaxy as well as the Orion Nebula. ZWO has also thankfully posted first light from this telescope and here you can take a look at them for yourself. As you can see there is a fairly good amount of resolution however the field of view doesn't look like it changed very much. Thankfully however with this shorter field of view mosaic mode would take a much less amount of time than it would with the S50. This telescope like the S50 is going to have three built-in filters that being the dual band filter, the UV IR pass, and the dark frame filter. It's going to have a lot of the same functionalities as the C-Star S50, just in a smaller, more compact, more portable body. Also, instead of it being a clip-on solar filter for solar imaging, they are now using a magnetic solar filter for easy removal, which in my opinion is a huge upgrade over that snap-on solar filter. Also, because it's magnetic, perhaps they would release accessories allowing you to screw in your own filters onto a magnetic ring holder. It has the same great optics as the C-Star S50, meaning that it has an apochromatic optic system including ED glass, and it comes in a small bag instead of a much larger case. Now for the final thing that they added onto this telescope, and personally I did not expect them to follow along the same route as Dwarf Lab, and that is a dual lens system. I noticed that in the specs they didn't give a whole lot of information on the focal length or the aperture of this tiny lens, however I'm sure they're aiming to use this for wide angle Milky Way shots wide angle landscape photos, and for many other different reasons. Also with this it should be much easier to locate deep sky objects such as the moon and the sun without having to use that pinpoint sun locator like we had to use uh, with C Star S50. So a lot of great improvements, definitely looking forward to being able to try this telescope out for myself. Let me know in the comments down below if you will want to try this telescope, and if you found this video enjoyable or informative, Please make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I wish you all clear skies.